Good morning, everybody. Hello. Um, I'm not sure if you were expecting to see us this morning or not. We are doing a stop take at the moment. So I've literally just whizzed back upstairs to do the video this morning. Uh, oh, it was popped up. It just popped up to say we were live and now it's disappeared. Oh, here we go. We are There we go. Live. That's yes, fine. I can live. see if anybody is joining us now. Oh, let me mute that off. There we go. We are having a good morning from Donna, Kathy, Sharon and Sue so far. Oh, lovely. So, hello to you all. Morning, morning, everybody. Morning, morning. Isn't it a glorious day? As usual. At the moment, I know it's gorgeous, isn't it? We've had so much sunshine. It's been amazing. I know it's supposed to be getting a bit cloudier over the weekend, but actually, to be honest, the plants could do with it, really. I know I'm sounding like my mother now. I really am. I so apologise. Um, yes, we are in the middle of a stock take at the moment. And, oh my gosh, we've got so much fabric downstairs. We're really busy kind of getting out all of the orders out of the way today. Um, and then we're basically going to count what's left. Um, but we've got lots of new stuff coming in that I really want to show you. I think there's actually going to be too much to have on Fabric Friday this week. So what we might do is split it into two and have another one and just keep some of it. But when we go, when the shop reopens on Friday, have a look through because we're gonna be clearing out all of the stuff that we know we can't get any more of. Um, and so everything in the shop on Friday will be there and ready and available. Um, I know people have said sometimes before, oh, it's all sold out so quickly and I didn't get a chance to have a look at it. And I'm really sorry about that. We are trying to order in larger quantities now, but I'm afraid if it's a really popular fabric and we're sticking it up on social media, it's going to go. So I would definitely have a quick squint Friday morning um, and see if there's anything you like, because I know that the ones that we put up on Fabric Friday are usually really popular. So apologies that we're selling fabric, but that's what we do. And I'm hoping that you really like it. Actually, we've been collating the orders this morning and some of the fabrics that you guys are putting together are looking really nice. Um, and do watch out because we're sending out our extra little kind of gifts, extra presents this week because we were eight last Tuesday. I can't believe that it's gone so quickly. I really can't. Um, let's mm -hmm. So eight people are getting a gift. Yes, Just to yes, make that clear. yes, yes, yes. See, I know what's going on in my head, but it quite sometimes it doesn't actually come out of my mouth, right? <laughs> so, yes, we are sending out eight special gifts with eight orders that have been placed over the weekend. Um, so look out for those. Tag us on social media if you want to show us what you're going to do with it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. We want it to be a surprise. Um, so, yes, today I thought I would do a quick one. Now, actually, it was Sharon who inspired me for this because... Um, one of the videos that we've got up in the sewing studio is um, all about... Sorry. Charlie's just hitting his camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's Sorry. fine. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, Sharon was uh, going through the videos that we've got in the sewing studio and thought, OK, I'm going to um, go back to the beginning and have a look. So we've done a little video in there about what kind of sewing kit and stuff like that you need. And so she thought, oh, yeah, actually, what I really need to do is get to know my machine because it does all these things I've never really kind of worked out what it does so I thought do you know what that's a Technics Tuesday so it's a really good idea and as we've got time at the moment still because not everybody is back to work and um, to be honest I think it is going to take a while for everything to go back to normal whatever normal is it's going to be a different normal isn't it um, so now is the opportunity to get to know your sewing machine. So what I'm going to do today is I've cut myself a few pieces of calico. And what I'm going to do is kind of make a little book, a little stitch book. So going through all of the different processes, all of the different stitches and functions that your machine does, it's definitely worth getting your manual out and having a little look. How many of us really read our sewing machine instruction manual? Not very many. I'm going to put my hand up here and say, I don't. Um, all I want to do is, I know it's like driving up, when you get a car, I don't, you know, every new car I've had, I've never actually looked at the 
handbook that goes with it, really, other than to try and work out how to put oil in it. You know, where's the dipstick? But otherwise, you know, why would you? You know how a car works. You kind of know how a sewing machine works. But actually, if you are aware of the features on your sewing machine, then uh, you're going to get so much more out of it, aren't you? And what I quite like to do is to actually create a stitch library. Now, if you're lucky enough to have one of these kinds of machines that has loads of different kinds of stitches, you may or may not want to use all of them. But if you at least know what they do, you will then be better informed about when you might want to use them, if you see what I mean. So I would definitely go through, um, oh, I can just see Charlie's on a close up now, which is really good. Don't worry, Mia, we can always catch up later. We haven't really talked about much. All we're doing is getting to know your sewing machine, really. Um, oh, it is going, going to be a bit of a short and sweet one. Yep. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look. And Selena says, hi Jules, your dressmaking book arrived today. It Ooh. is fab. Oh, good. That's great. Thank you for ordering that. That's brilliant. Tina says, just sewing my Cressida for real viscose is very slippery. <laughs> Treat it lightly and you'll be fine. Don't overpin it because it doesn't like being overpinned, viscose. Again, light, a light touch and you'll find it much easier to work with. That's a good point, actually. Lots of people saying good morning and good morning. Oh, lovely. Julia says, book squirrels. <laughs> uh, that's you, that is. That's me, yeah. <laughs> I am a bit like that. I'm really sorry. I don't, my, I've realised now, over the years, and actually doing my teacher training years and years ago when I did my PGCE, it does make you realise that actually people, people's brains work in all kinds of really weird ways. People don't learn in the same kind of way. It's really interesting. We did a brilliant exercise. I'm totally going off track here, doing another squirrel moment. But um, <laughs> one of our lectures when we were doing, when I was doing PGCE training, teacher training, we were asked to um, write down 10 key points from a bit of information that she was reading out. And all of us out of a class of 30 had got different things down. So when you're, it's really interesting when people are listening to a piece of information, People, individuals are picking up on so many different kinds of things and it's really, that's, I find that quite fascinating actually, which just goes to show that people's brains work in all kinds of different ways, which is why we need to try and adjust our teaching styles to encompass everybody, which hopefully we do. Um, there we go, a little bit off topic there. Uh, Debbie says, your machine needs a service. Well, it seems to have got a mind of its own. Do you know what? It really is worthwhile. You know, you get your car serviced every year. I would definitely get your sewing machine serviced um, because when you think about the speed that they go and how often you're using it, hopefully, then um, it's definitely worth making sure that it's being looked after. A little bit of TLC and they will serve you right. Uh, oh, uh, love my top. Oh, yes. Sorry, I'm reading things again, aren't I? Mia, hi, Mia. Um, you think you've got a pair of mid-calf Porsche trousers I made out of an off-cut I bought from you? Ooh, that would be really nice. This, unfortunately, we can't, I haven't got this fabric in at the moment. I'm trying to get it again, but, because I absolutely love it, and it comes in blue, which is really good. Um, uh, Anita says, PG, some don't have brains. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that, Anita, at all, because everybody has a brain. It just depends on how you use it, really. Uh, from Sharon Whitaker, I really want a pin cushion like yours. Which one? Which one? We've uh -huh. got the mag. Now these ones, the magnet ones, we've got in the shop, and it will be back open again on Friday, so you can buy one of those. This one is a Liberty one, and my my best friend Marge, no, she hasn't got blue hair. Um, my best friend Marge bought this for me for my fiftieth, so which is really cool. So that's why I keep that on my desk next to my sewing machine. Uh, so this morning, uh, you made a pad for your sewing machine to sit on using all the different stitches. Oh, that's a really good idea, Sue, actually. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, what I want to try and do, if I do a quick demo, a quick one. So I'm kind of thinking in terms of all of my squares of calico, I want to keep a good inch down the right hand side free because I want to sew them all together and make a little book. So I'm actually going to go and just work my way through all of these stitches. But the nice thing about calico is that you can write notes on it. So just with a biro, 
you can write your own kind of reminders and stuff like that. Or you can actually write down what the stitch number is on your machine or what the setting is if you're doing a straight stitch, for example. So I'm just going to start. Well, I'm going to zoom in now. Oh, you're going to zoom in. So you know. Charlie's zooming. So actually, if I start that like end, there we go. Oh, no, if I start there, there we go. So I'm kind of working out where my stitch is going to go. So I'm going to do a double zero, which is great. And what I want to do is take it right down to about not to about one, just so I can see what the settings are. So I've got a nice bright coloured thread on here. So Now that's, in, that's quite interesting because it's a really tiny little stitch. And what I'm going to do is go all the way across there with all the different settings. So I'm going to take it up to one and a half, 1.8, 2, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6. 2. And actually what I would do is all the way across there and then right at the top, just write down what number they are, which I think is really handy. And then what I would do is actually go on and do another one where now on my machine it does a kind of a start stop so it does a little reverse zoom in again as much as I can. It's which is really it's handy terribly clear. It'll, it'll be a i know clearer on YouTube. yes when you watch it on youtube so i'm going to put it onto number one now and see what that does yeah. now i think that's going to do a little reverse and a little reverse at the end which is really handy oh i like that that's oh yeah so presumably, now what do I do when it stops? This is the question. Do I press that or do I just go like that? I don't know. See, this is where I should have read my instruction manual, isn't it, really? <laughs> and you're improvising as usual, don't you? I know, I am improvising as usual. I'm really sorry. But actually, okay. that's quite nice. So it does a little reverse there, okay, which quite. is really cool. I know. But I think it's worth going over. And so now I can mark that with stitch number one. Now, stitch number two, I know, I use that. So that does, if I put that on number two, there we go. There we go. I press my little target button there. And that does a little stitch on the spot, which is really handy, actually. So you could write along the side here what, you know, what your stitch does. So that, or what, what, you know, what it would be really good for. Um, so I think that is a brilliant way. I'm going to work my way through that now. So number three is another one. That's where it's over onto the left hand side. So for actually, basically all of those stitches and then are the useful ones. So you've got um, a triple stitch. Now that's quite interesting because if you've got a triple stitch on your sewing machine, it actually doesn't look like that when you've stitched it. It's actually a triple stitch. Are you able to just adjust oh, your sorry. It's scraping on Oh dear, I'm very sorry. Oh dear. Okay. What was I talking about? You were talking about triple stitches. Yes, I was. Thank you, that man. Um, so yeah, if you've got a triple stitch, it looks like three bars together. It's actually a stretch stitch, which is a really handy one for when you are sewing uh, knitwear or rather um, performance wear. So if you're sewing leggings or you're sewing um, a gym top or something like that, and it's a place where you know that there's going to be tension, so on a crotch seam or an armhole or somewhere like that, that's a nice strong stitch to... Um, to make to sew two bits together so it's a constructional stitch rather than a finishing stitch if you see what I mean so a finishing stitch would be something like on here which is a 14 so it looks like a wide zigzag with kind of bars either side so that's the kind of thing that you might want to use um, finishing off your seams or something like that which is really good I'm just going to have a quick look and see what the comments are because I know we've got some questions um, Amy says, homeschooling oh, yes. my twins, completely different way of learning. Absolutely. I think that's genius, really. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's... Uh, do you find it's easier, Amy? Do you think you're understanding your kids more? 
it's a really interesting it's actually I know some people find it really really hard but actually it's quite an interesting opportunity really isn't it I know my kids aren't in school anymore because they're big and beardy uh, well all is not but Seamus <laughs> is um, and uh, but it's really, really nice having to time with them hanging out with them actually they're young adults at the moment and I wouldn't normally get to spend this much time with them because they're off doing their own thing which is as it should be um, but actually having to spend time with, with actually having to spend time with your children um, <laughs> yeah a little bit of a double-edged sword perhaps but I think it's a fantastic opportunity one that we're not really going to get again are we hopefully once this is all done and sorted um, Mel you're talking talking about, you found polycotton at £1.50 a meter would that work for twirls yes absolutely the thing with making up a twirl is you want to use fabric that is as close to the fabric that you want to use for your proper garment as you can. Now, the reason people use calico is because it's woven and it's well behaved and it doesn't stretch and it's quite stable. So it's easy to work with. But if you're working with something that's got a bit more drape to it. So, for example, if your finished outfit or garment is going to be made out of um, a viscous rayon, say that's got a little bit more life to it a bit more wobble a bit more drape to it then you would might want to use something like um, an old duvet or a bit of polycotton because that's going to have a little bit more movement to it whereas a calico can be quite stiff sometimes so you want to find a fabric for your toile that's going to be as close to your proper fabric as you can really but so yeah polycotton one pound fifty a meter that's not bad is it really uh, do you think everyone understands the word twirl perhaps if they're new to dressmaking they might not oh see here's my little voice in the background there reminding <laughs> me that actually um a twirl oh itchy nose is um it's a french word it's spelled t-o t-o-i-l-e like toil if you see what I mean, that's where it kind of comes from, I think. That's its Latin derivative or whatever it is. Um, basically, it's a mock-up version. So uh, Americans call them muslins um, because they are, their word for muslin is calico, if you see what I mean. As usual, they get the coming things back to front. There we go. Um, so, yeah, Americans call them um, a muslin, and uh, although it's made out of calico. Um, but it's like a kind of a mock-up version of your garment. So most people will make them to test the pattern out and to make sure that they get the fit right before making it up in the proper fabric. So it's like a kind of a rough out version, really. Does that explain it there, Charlie? Do you yes. feel like you know what it is now? Well, I already knew because you told me a million times. Oh, but that's not okay. everyone does. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, oh, don't worry, Burn. Ch yep, we're here. We're just doing a quick one today because I'm going to be back downstairs uh, shortly counting, counting buttons, actually. We're going to be putting buttons on the website too. So there'll be loads of new stuff on there on Friday. Um, oh, Nikki, your machine is finally coming out for the first time in 10 weeks. Oh, I bet you've missed it, haven't you? Oh, dear. Um, Sharon, the pincushion on my sewing machine. Ah, this little one. We actually got this. It came with the um, sewing machines when we got them from Genome. Um, so I would, if, you're, if you've got a Genome machine, I think you can buy them separately. Just have a look at the website um, and plug your uh, machine model number in and they will probably be able to find you. You'll probably be able to find it on Google. Ask the God of Google. They will know. So... Uh, Amy, oh yes, it's been a great bonding, letting them just explore being creative and learn their own ways. I think that's great, actually. I like the great flower fight on Netflix. Oh, brilliant. Ooh, okay. Ah, the great flower fight. Oh, oh, is that the floristry thing? I think that's oh, got yeah. Vic Reeves in it, hasn't it? Briefly, I think. Yes, I think, yeah. I, yeah. No, what's his real name? It's not Vic Reeves, is it? It's can't remember. Moya, something Moya. Oh. I can't remember now. Jim, Jim Moyer, Moyer that's yeah, it, yeah. Vic Reeves. I know, actually, there's another one. I don't know if you've ever watched, um, is it, what, is it Gone Fishing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, Bob Mortimer and uh, Paul Whitehouse. Loved it. I absolutely loved it. He reminds me of a couple of my friends who are so dry and uh, the things they talk about whilst they're actually up to their armpits in river 
is hysterical. If you watch it, catch it on iPlayer. I love it. It's really funny. That's another one. Yes, oh, Grayson's finished, so we need to catch up now, don't we? Um, I've just caught... You can make them with a milk bottle top. I'm thinking, hey, ooh, I need to find... Cushion. Oh, a pin cushion. Ooh, yeah, that's okay. interesting. That's clever. I quite like that. Uh... I'm just reading comments. Sorry, I'm reading comments again. I can't read and talk at the same time, clearly. Um, you can read. I can read. Actually, I could do that, couldn't I? Oh, Carolyn, you just moved into a wide beam barge. Oh, how lovely. Hoping to get your sewing room up and running today. Oh, fantastic. Um, I'd love to see some photos of that. So when you're all sorted, stick some in our um, FB friends group. Uh, we've got a sewing something friends, which is our kind of group, our... So um, social kind of thing, whatever it is. I can't even get my words out at the moment today. Um, will you be able to walk around the site so we all know where things are? I'm convinced I found a list of tutorials once, but for the life of me, I can't remember where it is. Um, Phyllis, we've got several places. Now, on our main website, we have a blog. So that's got lots of different things in there as well. No videos really on the blog. It's just um, photos and written tutorials and stuff. So you've got, there are things there. Then we've got the um, Facebook group, which is Send Me Something Friends. So you can come and find us and have a chat to other people um, about stuff in there, ask questions, and uh, people are quite happy to share their knowledge and, and offer advice there as well. Then we've got YouTube. So at the moment, all of the lives that we've been doing are up on YouTube. Uh, again, it's all just called Send Me Something. So if you just Google Sew Me Something or search for Sew Me Something on YouTube or Facebook or Insta or Pinstagram, Instagram or Pinterest or anywhere like that, you'll find us. Um, we uh, then have got the sewing studio, which I think you are a member of, aren't you? Yes, you are. I remember chatting to you in there. Um, and then we've got Slack, which is the kind of community space for the sewing studio. So anybody can join us on Facebook, but... Um, there were quite a few people, we had quite a few emails saying that they wanted to be part of the sewing studio, but they didn't want to be on Facebook, which is totally fair enough. Um, so that's why we created Slack, which is our community space there. So there is information on all of them. Um, and what we try and do is we're going to try and keep everything eventually in the sewing studio. So all of the tutorials and stuff like that will be in there as well. It's just taking us time to get there. But we've been filming a big one last week mm -hmm. um, that we're going to edit and that'll be up in a couple of weeks time because you would not believe how long it takes to edit stuff. I'm halfway through. I know. And it. Charlie's Charlie's brilliant, but it's just one of those things that just takes time, really, um, because one week we've edited it. We then kind of think, oh, actually, no, we need to change that bit or we need to add that bit in. So we need to go back and do some more stuff. So we're making sure that we've got all the information in there for you. Um, so that's where you can find us, really. So we're all over the place. Where are we with the Crusher uh... uh That's coming. Yes, that will be um, out today because we've got everything done and sorted now. So that's good. Uh, so, oh, yep, Leanne's just popped a link up there for uh, YouTube. So that's brilliant. Um, and she's put the blog up there as well. So you can find that too. So hopefully you'll be able to navigate your way around where we are. Hello from Valerie Flack, who's in Lower Quinton, just down the road. Oh, lovely. Hello, Valerie. Oh, that, you're not far away at all. Um, there we go. Um, question from Mickey Hill about workshops. Oh, yeah. I started a workshop with you and it was stopped due to lockdown. Any idea when this was resumed? Yep. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, Nikki, I would love to say yes, we're going to start whenever. Um, I know you were probably doing one with Rachel, weren't you? So I'm going to actually, we're going to have a little get together on Friday, a virtual get together with uh, some of the tutors that were working with us before lockdown. Um, and we want to try and see, A, what they feel comfortable with, um, because I know that uh, stuff is opening and what have you and things like that. And people are kind of trying to get back to normal and country parks and the beaches are crowded and all of that kind of stuff. And to be honest, I'm just going to hang fire because I have a horrible sneaky suspicion that we might end up seeing another spike in cases. We're still getting 300 and something a day at the moment. Um, so we're going to kind of hang fire until we know where we are with everything. We are looking at 
all the different kind of safety measures that we can put in, like sanitizers and wipes and everything like that, and people working on their own stations and things. So um, bear with us. We are aware that um, people are going to start wanting to know what's going on. And as soon as we've made any decisions about that, we will let you know. Um, but obviously we want to make sure that we're safe and that you're safe as well. And that the tutors who will be teaching you are going to be feel safe too. Um, it is a difficult one really. Um, and I can understand why, you know, walking around supermarkets and nipping in and out of boots and stuff like that, it just seems a bit more kind of normal. But I think when you're in a workshop environment and you are literally breathing in each, breathing in and out each other's air, that's a different kind of matter, really. Um, and as we would like to, you know, trying to keep people as separate as possible, but socially distancing within a workshop environment is going to be really hard. So we're working on it. We'll, and, we'll let you know as soon as we possibly can. Exploring all kinds of online yep, ideas. Yeah, we're looking at other ideas. online so ideas. And if anyone has any ideas, yeah. let us know. Yeah, what that man said over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I will have to chat with uh, Rachel and Claire and uh, see how they'd feel about going on Zoom and mm. offering Zoom workshops and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, lots to kind of think about and lots to kind of get to grips with still. Um, and if I'm totally honest, it probably won't be back to what it was. It will be different, um, albeit offering the same kind of value and the same level of instruction and tuition that we had before um, and the same levels of help and support that we want to and that we've always been able to offer, but it will be in a different way. So I hope you can understand and just bear with us on this, but we're trying to explore all the different options at the moment. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a tricky one, really. Mm. So, oh, look, um, yeah, oh, you're agreeing with me. That's wonderful. Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to be out on a limb here. But actually, I think just hanging fire at the moment is one of those things that, uh, yeah, we want to be safe and we want to make sure that everyone else is safe, really. And we are creating loads of things. We are. Including, are you possibly working on a pattern? Oh, we might be, yes. In fact, I'm working on two new patterns at the moment. Um so next week, once we've got stop take out of the way, my focus is going to be entirely on two new patterns, which I think you're going to really like. I'm hoping to be able to knock them out this month because not having any shows and not doing any teaching, I've got a lot more concentrated time now to be able to get stuff sorted. So I'm really looking forward to those. Although we do need to make more videos. We have got to make more videos, exactly. Yes. So, yes. Morning, Laurie. Morning, Jane. Um, I'm Jen, I'm loving your Instagram actually and the uh, pictures that you've got of all of your glamping um, yurts and stuff look amazing. I really want to come and visit you one day. Uh, so you love how I've colour coded my bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The thing is I've colour coded them so they look really nice but now I can't actually find anything because I can never be bothered to read the titles. <laughs> Whereas before I knew it was just like oh yeah I can go for a red one or whatever it was. Um, Jane, you're also having to think we, how you do the glamping site. I know there are so many people in this boat, aren't there? Having to kind of totally rethink how you're offering what you were before, um, which isn't bad. It's just different. As I keep saying to my kids, different isn't bad. It's just different, mm. if you see what I mean. Um, Brenda, you have to agree with everything you're saying about, yeah, Yep, Leanne's popped up. Yeah, we're trying to kind of get some ideas on what people would feel safe with um, and how many people you'd feel comfortable being in a workshop with and all of that kind of stuff. And we are aware that we've got quite a few people booked on stuff and we've had to kind of like postpone it. We're not cancelling. I have to be really firm about that. We're not cancelling. We will be running it again. We just need to find out when. So we're not kind of saying we're not going to do it. We're just kind of hanging fire as to when we think it's going to be safe to do so. Mm -hmm. So that's a really positive thing. Morning, Claire. Hello. How are you? Uh, you thought that might be the case with the books. Yes. Oh, Adele, you've ordered the iris and can't wait to make it. I know it's lovely. Actually, she's sitting on the stand behind me here, which was left over from Friday. And I think it's a really nice one. There you go. There's iris with her frills. Yes, we've got... We have that fabric. Uh, quite, how much of it? I'm going to zoom in. I don't know if people can actually see the frills. Ah, uh, Jojo. <laughs> Jojo, you really made us laugh yesterday. I have to say, the incident with the dog and the tissue paper. 
um, we did find that quite amusing. So thank you for being in touch about that. That was really good. Yeah, you did make us smile. So thank you. That was really good. Um, yeah, dog is eating the fabric. Oops. 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 Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Never mind, eh? Anyway, you were explaining some stuff on the sewing machine. I was, actually. I've got into oh, chatting. Sh chatting with people, which is really nice. Yes. Um, but actually, what yes. we need to do is talk about fabrics and... No, not fabrics. We're doing the sewing machine, aren't we? Yes. Yes, let's back back to the sewing machine. Good so, <laughs> three, two, one, back in the room. Um, what I'm doing is, it's all about getting to know your machine. Now, uh, it is really important that you read the instruction manual. I must admit, I'm not very good at doing that. I'm going to put my hand up to it. But I think it's really worthwhile... Uh, doing it and creating a little stitch library and literally going through all of the stitches on your machine and collating them together now I'm actually I am actually going to do this and I will put it onto um, social when I've done it I'm going to create a little book that's got different leaves in it with the different kinds of stitches on it so I'm going to have one for um, the straight stitch and what that does and then I'm going to have another one for kind of stretchy stitches so for my machine here, it would be from kind of four to about 14. Um, now you could use some of those as well as um, neatening too. Um, so it's worth, and then you've got a different range of buttonholes here, which is quite interesting. And you've got all of these different kind of decorative stitches. So it's well worth actually just keeping a record, doing a sample of it, making a note of what the stitch number is on your machine and having it to hand because you never know, oh, Charlie's got a tickly throat. You never know when you might need it. If you've had a look at our um, blog, we've got Making the Most of Stitches, I think it's called. Anyway, what we've done is we did that with the red viola. Where is she? Is she up here? Yes. Um, yeah. There we go, disappeared for a sec. So on this red viola skirt that we've done, I've actually used the star stitch, which on here, Let me see if I can, zoom in. can oh, you yeah, zoom yeah, in yeah. there? There we go, which is number 89 on this machine. Um, and it may not be very clear on the live because uh, yeah. the quality isn't as good, but it will be high quality on YouTube later. Yes. If you can't actually see something, have a look at it on YouTube. Have a look on YouTube later. So it's not, it's kind of realising what these little stitches are and how actually I'm looking at that one there, number 98. That's really cute. Oh, 97. That's nice as well, actually. Uh, I, so, you can't actually I know you can't see. see. Don't worry, what you can't see. Well, 97... Actually, i get my glasses out now so I can see what I'm doing. 97 is like a little kind of... Like a little kind of leaves and a heart and some more leaves, which oh, is actually really sweet. See if I can see me, but I, I No, don't might, worry if you can't. It might be a bit small. But, but yeah. what I really was trying to explain was if you know what the stitches are... So, on here, we've just used them on the viola skirt and around the waistband. There we go. So if you know what the stitches are, you can kind of think, oh yeah, that would look really nice on a blah. I'm just gonna try zooming so, in. Hold it up a bit. There we go. And just see if I can zoom in. There we go. So those are the star yeah. stitches. That's a little star stitch, which on my machine is number 89. But you'll probably have something very similar and uh, you can make a note of what it is in your little stitch library. So it's these kinds of things. You might want to do like on the, um, on the Beatrice pinafore, we've done the binding and then we've used a decorative stitch on top of the binding. So if you know what all of your decorative stitches look like, you'll know where you want to use it. So that's the most important thing really. It's just about making sure that you are aware of what your machine actually does. So there are things, um, you know, if you've got now, what we're really lucky, we've got the presets on here. So it's understanding what they do as well. So it will automatically set it to different kinds of stitch. So we've got the straight stitch, a basic zigzag, and then we've got a, an overcasting or overlock stitch, and we've got the buttonhole. Um, so it's understanding what your machine does, I think, is the most important thing. 
Oh, Amy, you feel a new machine coming on. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Oh, Sharon, you're going to you're going to do that star stitch, and you've just bought the viola pattern. Oh, it's lovely. Have a little test. Make sure you've got it how you want it. So double check your settings. Most of the time, the default ones will probably be fine, actually. Um, Sarah, what machine have we got? We've got um, it's a Genome machine, and it's an M one hundred QDC. These are the ones that we've got in the studio. Um, but I would have a look and see what kind of features you want for a machine. If I was going to buy one now, I would have one with a knee lift because I love knee lifts. Knee lifts have come from um, industrial machines. And basically, you have a little plug-in thing here and you have um, a bar that comes out and is bent and you've got a pad that sits just level with your knee and you can move your foot up and down with your knee pad like that which means you've got both hands free all the time to sew Ooh. so you literally just swing your knee and your foot lifts up and you can tuck your fabric underneath it um, a lot of the features on oops on um, domestic sewing machines have come from industrials so things like underbed trim which is basically your scissors so it chops your thread for you um, and the knee lift as well. They all come from industrial machines um, and they're really nice little features to have. So think about what you want out of a machine um, and make a list, make a wish list and then have a look and see what the different models have to offer um, and what prices there are because obviously, you know, that's going to be a key factor um, and see what you're looking for really. Just going back to the question that Dell was oh. asking, is that a rolled hem on the frill or is it done with an overlocker? It is done with an overlocker. On the iris. Yes, it's done with an overlocker and it's the rolled hem setting. Now we did one of that. We did a Technic Tuesday exactly on that a couple of weeks ago. So if you go back onto YouTube, you should be able to find the video for that there. Um, and we've actually got the lovely overlocker coming out in the uh, sewing studio soon as well. We're doing a big full one. Oh, Sharon says it took her three years to work out what the bar was for. I love that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, actually, Linda says, I'm new to open lockers. Is there a course soon? Um, yes, actually, there might be coming one, one coming soon. Um, that's the next big one that we're going to be doing in the sewing studio. So It's not a secret anymore. I'm rubbish at keeping secrets, aren't I, really? <laughs> I just want to tell you about all the exciting stuff that we're doing. This is the thing. Oh. Um, so, yes, we are going to be doing that, and it will be available in the sewing studio. So that is, uh, we're putting some, we've got more and more exciting stuff planned for in there. Um, you know, thank you to everybody who has signed up already because it was a bit of a kind of a, you know, we tried to make sure that we've got stuff in there for you already, but we are adding stuff and it is going to be such brilliant value for you because there's going to be so much content in there. Um, so do pass the word. Um, if you've enjoyed it, let us know. If there's anything that you think that we can improve, let us know because we want to be there to help you guys, really. That's what it's all for. Um, um, a lovely long comment there from Rachel Lock. Hello, Rachel. How Hi, are Rachel. You? How are you? Um, if, Gosh, you oh, must have been home educating at the moment. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, been, Tabby, age six, made her first skirt. Oh, fantastic. And a matching headband. Oh, wonderful. I did the pedal and she steered. That's brilliant. That's exactly what I, how I taught my daughter. Yeah, that's fab. Barney, age 11, is going to try and use his dad's old shirt to make some PJ shorts. Perfect. Using a similar version of your scrubs pattern for his make and do a mend World War II project. Wonderful. Unfortunately, he wasn't keen on his dad's shirt, so he made masks for the work team instead. Oh, I love that. Clearly, oh. he's got style already then. I think that's wonderful. Fantastic. Oh, dear. Um, oh, morning, Helen. Yes, I know. We kind of weren't really sure whether we were going to be able to do it today, but we thought, do you know what? I'm going to nip up here quickly and just do it, and it's fine. So we're here, which is brilliant. And it's just as well, because there are 105 people watching. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Hello, Good morning, everyone. everybody. Good morning. That's brilliant. Nikki, you're working in a supermarket, and I've been out on St John's. Oh, fantastic. Hello. Well done. Thank that's, you, Nikki. Yeah, thank you for that. That's mar marvellous, doing a fantastic job there. Um, People are doing, oh, yep, I'm, gonna go. I'm sorry, I'm reading comments at the same time. There we go. Leanne. Oh, yes. What's the best stitch to use for, for tacking? Um, tacking. 
now you're kind of swearing at me now. <laughs> oh dear. Tacking is, um, it depends on what you're going to tack. Now, if you're, for example, if you've got pockets and you need to keep the pockets in place, then I would just do a really long machine stitch um, and just kind of baste, tack those in place. Um, but otherwise, I would, I would never bother tacking seams or anything like that, unless I was working with a really fine fabric and then I would probably hand sew them anyway. I'd hand tack them with big stitches. So if you're working with a really fine silk or a velvet or anything like that, then it's worth doing it. But normal, normally, I wouldn't worry. But if you're going to do machine basting or machine tacking, just use a really long stitch for that, and that should be absolutely fine. Um, in other words, when you're doing normal home dressmaking, you wouldn't do red tacking. But when you were doing evening wear and yes. wedding dresses, yes. you did. Well, sometimes. Not okay. all the time, though. Okay. Because I just can't be bothered. <laughs> Which is not really what you're supposed to do, is it, really, now? Let's face it. Um, Oh, Elizabeth, did I make my necklace? Uh, you struggle with that and you lift now. I know, once you get used to them, they're brilliant. I didn't make my necklace. This is from a lady called Beth Pegler, and you can find her on Instagram. She's lovely, and she does some amazing necklaces. I'm very sorry for swearing, Jules. It's on silk. Then I probably would, actually. But um, I'd probably hand tack it together rather than machine tack it. If it's like a, um, a silk chemise or a silk habitat or something like that, I would probably go for a, a hand tack it. It's a bit quicker, a bit easier, and you can kind of manipulate the fabric with your hands and your fingers as you're sewing it. So it's going to make it easier then. Uh, Kate Hathaway Noel says her Husqvarna machine has a double tap oh, foot. Ah. I used to have a Husqvarna that chainsaw. But really? Yes. <laughs> Husqvarna make a lot of things, Charlie, don't they? They do make a lot of things, yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, it does make it much easier, actually. I think if you've got a, a knee lift or anything like that, go for it. Use it, make sure. So if you've got a funny little hole on the front of your machine, have a look and see in your manual and make sure that um, it's probably the fact that you can actually add a knee lift to it, which is great. Mm, cool. There we go. So right. we're going to wind up now because I've got to go back and start doing counting again. Um, have a go with your sewing machine create a little stitch book I would and then you've got that next to you while you're sewing and it's just going to remind you of the different kind of stitches that your machine's able to do um, even if you've got a very basic machine you'll have a couple of zigzags I would imagine and even they're really useful for doing stuff with so get to know your machine get your manual out and really understand what it can do for you because a lot of modern machines are designed to be so much easier to use than the old ones that you know we probably learnt on as kids. Um, so make time for it. Oh, hi MJ, how are you? I know you've messaged me and I need to message you back. Um, oh, hello so, MJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, and I would also um, always test your stitches before you work on your proper project as well. Always have a bit of scrap fabric of whatever project you're working on, just to test out your stitches before you work on your machine. Because there's nothing worse than your bobbin accidentally coming unthreaded or in the wrong way or anything like that halfway through making something. If you can test out your stitches first, it's going to save you a lot of headaches. So I am going back to counting now. Thank you so much for watching this morning. It doesn't matter if you joined in late, we're going to stick it up on YouTube later and uh, we'll see you on Friday for Fabric Friday. Remember oh, Great British Sewing Bee is tomorrow. To tomorrow. Thank tomorrow you. Tomorrow night. Yes, I forget what day we're on even actually at the moment. Um, I loved Mark's bomber jacket. So Let's see what they're going to do this week and uh, have a fab few days and um, I'll see you on Friday for Fabric Friday. Take care and enjoy the sunshine.